Have you ever felt a shiver down your spine, as if something unseen is watching you? This unsettling feeling has haunted humans for centuries, giving rise to tales of creatures so terrifying that their names alone can make the bravest souls shudder. These beings are not just figments of imagination, but have roots deeply embedded in the fears and beliefs of ancient cultures. Demonic creatures, in their most basic sense, are entities that embody the darkest fears and evils that people can imagine. They often possess powers that defy the natural order, bringing nightmares to life and challenging our understanding of good and evil. Their origins are as varied as the cultures that conceive them. From the shadowy figures of ancient Mesopotamia to the terrifying spirits of Japanese folklore, these creatures have been a part of human storytelling for millennia. They come from a place where the veil between the known and the unknown is thin, where myths take shape and fear becomes flesh. What makes these beings so chilling is their common traits. They often defy natural laws, things that twist reality in horrifying ways. Imagine a creature that can change form at will, or one that can invade your dreams, making you question what is real and what is not. These entities are not bound by the rules that govern ordinary life. They can move through walls, appear in shadows, and cause untold suffering with a mere glance or whisper. Their very nature is to unsettle, to disturb the peace and comfort of everyday life. The cultural significance of these demonic entities speaks volumes about the societies that created them. They reflect the deep-seated fears of those times and places. In many cultures, these beings are seen as punishers of sin, enforcers of divine retribution, or manifestations of chaos. For example, ancient Greeks feared the Gorgons, who could turn people to stone with their gaze, a chilling reminder of the consequences of defying the gods. Similarly, the Oni of Japanese folklore represent the dark side of humanity, capturing the essence of what happens when anger and malice are left unchecked. These creatures also often serve as moral lessons or warnings. They embody the fears and struggles of societies, giving shape to abstract anxieties and allowing people to confront their deepest concerns in a tangible way. In times of uncertainty, these demonic figures become symbols of the chaos lurking just beyond the surface of civilization, reminding people of the ever-present potential for disorder and evil. Every story and depiction of these beings is a reflection of the human condition, showing how different cultures grapple with the unknown. The fear they inspire is not merely about the supernatural, but also about the aspects of human nature that they represent. In each tale, there's a shared acknowledgement of the darkness within and the fragile line that separates the ordered world from the chaotic abyss. As you read about these terrifying entities, remember that they are more than just stories of fright. They are cultural artifacts that reveal how people throughout history have understood and dealt with their darkest fears. These tales are a testament to the power of storytelling in confronting and coping with the most profound aspects of human experience. In the dim recesses of ancient tales, where shadows stretch long and dark, one figure emerges with a chilling presence. Lilith, the first demoness, stands as a haunting testament to the fears and beliefs of early Jewish folklore. Her story is more than a myth, it's a powerful symbol of rebellion and darkness that resonates through the ages. Lilith's origins trace back to some of the earliest Jewish writings. According to these ancient texts, she was the first wife of Adam, created at the same time and from the same earth. Unlike Eve, who was made from Adam's rib, Lilith was not meant to be a mere extension of him. This original equality was the very seed of her defiance. Lilith refused to be subservient, and this rebellion set her apart from the biblical norm. She demanded equality, and when Adam refused, she chose to leave the Garden of Eden, making her the first exile in the history of biblical lore. Her departure from Eden marked the beginning of her transformation into a demonic figure. In the shadows of mythology, Lilith became associated with sinister qualities. She was depicted as a night demon, haunting the darkness and preying on those who ventured too close to the edge of night. Her very name became synonymous with fear and the unknown. The story told of Lilith's flight into the wilderness, where she took on a monstrous form and became a figure of terror, lurking in the dark and feared for her malevolent nature. In religious texts, Lilith is often portrayed as a figure of great danger and destruction. She is said to roam the night, attacking pregnant women and infants. 
This aspect of religion was used to explain sudden illnesses or unexplained deaths in children, making her a symbol of unexplained and terrifying forces. Her story was a way to personify and confront the fears that lurked in the darkest corners of the human psyche. Representations of Lilith are as varied as they are disturbing. In some depictions, she is shown as a beautiful woman with long hair, seductive and alluring, while in others, she is a hideous demon with sharp claws and a thirst for blood. This duality in her appearance reflects the duality of her nature, both seductive and terrifying. Her symbolism is powerful and complex. She embodies both the strength of rebellion and the terrifying consequences of defiance. Lilith's story has had a profound impact on how demons are perceived. She stands as a powerful female figure who challenges the traditional roles assigned to women. In some interpretations, Lilith represents the voice of those who refuse to conform, who stand against the oppressive norms of society. Her legend shows the danger and power that comes with breaking away from established roles and expectations. In art and literature, Lilith is often used to symbolize the darker aspects of human nature and the struggles against oppression. Her story is a reminder of the consequences that can arise from stepping outside accepted boundaries and norms. She serves as a cautionary figure, illustrating the fear and fascination that surround those who defy conventional expectations. Lilith's presence in mythology and religion is a powerful and unsettling reminder of the complexities of human fears and desires. Her tale is not just about a demoness, but about the very essence of rebellion and the frightening potential of the unknown. Each story and depiction of Lilith brings to life the ancient anxieties and the dark allure of defying the conventional, making her an enduring symbol of both terror and empowerment. In the shadowy corridors of ancient Mesopotamian beliefs, one name echoes with a sinister reverberation, Pazuzu. This demon was not just a frightening figure, but a potent symbol of malevolent power. His name alone conjures images of dark forces that could bring both terror and destruction, wielding an influence that reached into every corner of Mesopotamian society. Pazuzu's origins trace back to ancient Mesopotamia, where he was seen as a powerful and fearsome spirit. Unlike other demons of his time, Pazuzu was often depicted as a king among demons, commanding respect and dread. His background is rooted in the ancient belief that he controlled the chaotic forces of nature. He was both feared and respected, seen as a force that could bring calamity but also had the power to repel other malevolent entities. Pazuzu's powers were nothing short of terrifying. He was known for his ability to bring about disease, famine, and storms. People believed that his influence could cause the wind to bring sickness or the sky to darken with impending doom. Yet, he was also believed to have the power to protect against other demons and evil spirits. This dual nature made him a complex figure, one who could both inflict horror and offer protection. In Mesopotamian magic and rituals, Pazuzu was often invoked in attempts to ward off other evil spirits, showing how his fearsome presence was simultaneously a tool for both destruction and defense. The way Pazuzu was depicted in ancient art adds a layer of chilling fascination to his legend. Artists of the time portrayed him with a grotesque mixture of features, a lion's head, an eagle's talons, and a scorpion's tail. His appearance was designed to be both awe-inspiring and terrifying. He was often shown with wings spread wide, a terrifying presence that seemed to command the very elements. These images were meant to evoke fear and respect, making clear the power he held over both the natural and supernatural worlds. In sculptures and carvings, Pazuzu was often represented with a menacing gaze and a fierce expression. These depictions were not merely artistic, they were meant to serve as warnings and protectors. By placing these images in homes and temples, ancient Mesopotamians hoped to invoke Pazuzu's protective power against the darker forces that lurked beyond the visible world. His presence in art was a constant reminder of the dangers that lay in wait and the formidable power required to keep them at bay. The stories and images of Pazuzu reflect a culture deeply aware of the fragility of life and the ever-present threat of unseen forces. His role as both a bringer of misfortune and a protector against other demons highlights the Mesopotamian understanding of the balance between fear and protection. 
The very presence of Pazuzu in their art and rituals underscores the intensity of their belief in the power of the supernatural and the need for both awe and reverence. Each depiction of Pazuzu serves as a chilling reminder of the ancient fears that shaped the lives of those who lived in Mesopotamia. His image, carved into stone and etched into memory, stands as a testament to the power of ancient beliefs and the profound impact that such terrifying figures had on the people who revered and feared them. In the shadowy corners of ancient lore, Asmodeus reigns as a figure of irresistible allure and chilling power. Known as the Demon of Lust, his name evokes a sense of both dread and fascination, representing one of the most potent forces of temptation and corruption. His story is as dark as it is compelling, leaving a mark on countless narratives across history. Asmodeus first emerged in the ancient texts of the Jewish tradition, appearing in the Book of Tobit, where he is portrayed as a malevolent spirit who causes chaos and destruction. Unlike other demons who might be linked to more physical forms of harm, Asmodeus embodies the corrupting force of unchecked desire. His origins are entwined with the concept of lust and sexual excess, which is said to drive individuals into destructive behaviors. This portrayal reflects a deeper fear of the power of unbridled passion, which was seen as a force capable of undermining personal and social stability. In various religious texts, Asmodeus plays a role that underscores his association with sin and moral failure. In the Book of Tobit, he is depicted as a demon who marries and kills seven of Sarah's husbands on their wedding nights, unable to tolerate their union. This horrific act serves as a stark warning against the dangers of unrestrained desire and the consequences of failing to control one's passions. His role in these texts serves as a powerful symbol of the destructive potential of lust and the chaos it can bring into the lives of those who are vulnerable. Asmodeus's influence extends beyond religious scriptures into the broader cultural imagination. His character has left an indelible mark on literature, art, and folklore. Over the centuries, he has been depicted in various forms, sometimes as a fearsome demon with a grotesque appearance, and other times as a more seductive, charismatic figure. This duality reflects the complex nature of desire itself, both alluring and dangerous. The stories of Asmodeus often highlight the ease with which passion can spiral into obsession and violence, illustrating the fine line between pleasure and pain. In medieval and renaissance art, Asmodeus is often depicted with a combination of human and monstrous features, representing the conflict between human desires and the monstrous consequences of succumbing to them. His image serves as a powerful reminder of the dangers of losing control over one's desires and the potential for such impulses to lead to one's downfall. This portrayal is not merely for shock value, but serves as a moral lesson on the importance of maintaining self-discipline and resisting temptation. Culturally, Asmodeus has become a symbol of the seductive and destructive power of lust. His story has been used to caution against the dangers of indulgence and the potential for personal ruin that comes from giving in to unchecked desires. The tales of his actions and influence serve as a dark mirror, reflecting the fears and anxieties of societies throughout history about the nature of desire and its ability to corrupt. Each mention of Asmodeus, whether in ancient texts or modern retellings, brings to light the enduring power of his legend. He represents more than just a mythical figure, he embodies the profound and often frightening influence of desire on human behavior. His story continues to captivate and terrify, serving as a timeless reminder of the thin line between passion and peril. In the chilling darkness of ancient texts and occult lore, one name stands out with a malevolent power, Amun. Often depicted as a fearsome demon of hell, Amun embodies the essence of terror and command over the infernal realms. His presence in these old stories brings a shiver, conjuring images of a creature that holds dominion over the darker side of existence. Amun is described with terrifying attributes that paint him as a formidable and unsettling figure. In many accounts, he appears with the head of a lion and the body of a serpent, a combination that evokes both primal fear and awe. His eyes are said to burn with an intense, fiery gaze, capable of piercing through the very soul of those who dare to meet his gaze. This fearsome appearance is not just for show, it reflects his abilities and the deep, unsettling power he commands. 
In the annals of religious and historical texts, Amun is often portrayed as a powerful demon who rules over a host of lesser spirits. His role in these texts is significant, as he is often shown as a demon who can summon and control other malevolent entities, influencing events and manipulating outcomes from the shadows. His presence is a dark reminder of the forces that work against the light and good, representing the ultimate embodiment of infernal power and control. Amun's symbolism in occult practices further deepens the sense of dread surrounding him. In various grimoires and magical texts, he is seen as a potent figure who can grant knowledge and power but at a steep cost. Those who seek his favor are often warned of the dire consequences of engaging with such a dark entity. His name and image are invoked in rituals and spells, reflecting his role as both a source of dangerous knowledge and a symbol of the perilous allure of forbidden power. The very essence of Amun's being is a stark reminder of the price of dabbling with dark forces. He represents the seductive danger of power and the fearsome consequences of engaging with entities beyond the human realm. Each mention of Amun in occult practices serves as a chilling testament to the lengths people might go in their quest for knowledge and power, and the dark shadows that follow those who seek such forbidden paths. In the fabric of these ancient stories and practices, Amun stands as a potent and terrifying figure, embodying the fear of the unknown and the peril of engaging with the darkest corners of existence. His image and influence serve as a haunting reminder of the balance between power and peril, making his presence in these narratives both captivating and fearsome. In the realm of dark symbols and enigmatic figures, one name stands out with a blend of mystery and awe, Baphomet. This figure has stirred both fascination and fear, embodying the complex interplay of ancient lore and modern reinterpretations. His image alone can evoke a shiver, combining elements that hint at deep and unsettling powers. Baphomet's origins trace back to the medieval period, though his true roots are obscured in mystery. The name first appeared in connection with the Knights Templar, who were accused of worshipping a strange and forbidden idol. Over time, this figure evolved into a symbol of occult knowledge and power. The true nature of Baphomet was shrouded in secrecy, with his image being used to represent the unknown and the dangerous realms of the occult. This figure's appearance is both striking and eerie. Depicted with a goat's head, human torso, and a set of wings, Baphomet combines various symbols into a single, unsettling entity. His body features a blend of opposites, male and female, human and animal, embodying the concept of duality and the merging of contradictions. This image serves as a powerful reminder of the complex nature of the world, where light and darkness, good and evil, coexist in a delicate balance. In occult practices, Baphomet holds a prominent place. His image is often used in rituals and ceremonies, symbolizing the pursuit of hidden knowledge and the exploration of the mystical and arcane. The figure represents the unity of opposites, a central theme in many occult traditions, emphasizing the idea that understanding and power come from embracing the balance between conflicting forces. Baphomet is seen as a guide to hidden truths and forbidden knowledge, though interacting with him is believed to come with significant risks. Modern interpretations of Baphomet have transformed him from a symbol of dread into one of philosophical and symbolic importance. In contemporary contexts, he is often seen as a representation of freedom and enlightenment, challenging traditional religious and moral boundaries. The image of Baphomet has been adopted by various modern groups, including some that use his symbolism to question established norms and explore new ways of understanding the world. The evolution of Baphomet's image reflects the shifting perspectives on power and knowledge. Once a symbol of dark and forbidden practices, he now represents the quest for deeper understanding and the breaking of conventional limits. His presence in modern culture continues to stir both controversy and intrigue, capturing the imagination of those who seek to challenge traditional views and explore the deeper, often darker, aspects of existence. Each representation of Baphomet carries a profound sense of mystery and power, reflecting the complex nature of his symbolism. Whether seen as a dark figure of ancient lore or a symbol of modern philosophical exploration, Baphomet's image remains a powerful reminder of the allure and danger of seeking knowledge beyond conventional boundaries.
In the darkest corners of ancient myth and religious texts, the name Beelzebub stands out with a terrifying and visceral impact. Known as the Lord of the Flies, this figure evokes a primal fear, representing a powerful and unsettling force that has haunted human imaginations for centuries. His story is one of corruption and dread, embodying the very essence of decay and malevolence. Beelzebub's origins can be traced back to ancient Near Eastern cultures, where he was originally a deity associated with flies. In these early contexts, he was considered a god of disease and decay, using swarms of flies as his harbingers. Over time, this image of pestilence and rot evolved into something much darker. As the name Beelzebub took on a more sinister connotation, he was increasingly depicted not just as a god of flies, but as a powerful demon with a much broader and more terrifying influence. In various religious traditions, Beelzebub is portrayed as a high-ranking demon or even a prince of hell. His role is often depicted as a leader of other demonic entities, commanding respect and fear among the ranks of the damned. In Christian theology, Beelzebub is frequently identified with Satan, representing a central figure in the hierarchy of evil. He is associated with the corruption of souls and the spread of sin, embodying the very essence of demonic influence and malevolence. The influence of Beelzebub extends beyond religious texts into the realms of cultural and literary representations. In literature, Beelzebub is often depicted as a malevolent force who brings chaos and destruction. His presence in stories serves as a symbol of the destructive power of evil, embodying the dark side of human nature and the potential for corruption that lies within. He is a figure who captures the imagination with his terrifying authority and his ability to corrupt and destroy. Culturally, Beelzebub has appeared in various forms of art and media, often symbolizing the ultimate expression of evil and decay. His image as the Lord of the Flies evokes a visceral reaction, tapping into deep-seated fears of disease, decay, and corruption. This representation serves as a stark reminder of the fragility of human morality and the ever-present threat of malevolent forces that seek to undermine and destroy. Each portrayal of Beelzebub, whether in ancient texts or modern interpretations, brings to light the deep-seated fears and anxieties that he embodies. His name alone can evoke a shiver, representing a powerful and terrifying force that stands as a constant reminder of the darker aspects of existence. Through his various representations, Beelzebub remains a potent symbol of the corruption and destruction that lie at the heart of human fears. In the shadowy echoes of ancient history, Baal emerges as a figure shrouded in both awe and dread. Known as an ancient Canaanite demon, Baal's story is one that intertwines with the very essence of fear and reverence. His name alone carries with it a sense of ancient power and ritual, representing forces that once commanded deep respect and terror. Baal's historical context is rooted in the ancient lands of Canaan, where he was worshipped as a deity of storms and fertility. He was seen as a powerful god who controlled the weather, bringing rain to the arid lands and ensuring the fertility of the earth. His influence over these critical aspects of life made him a central figure in the spiritual lives of the people. Yet, beneath this image of a benevolent force lay a more complex and darker side, reflecting the multifaceted nature of ancient beliefs and fears. The worship of Baal was marked by intense and often unsettling rituals. Devotees would engage in ceremonies designed to invoke his favor and appease his wrath. These rituals often involved sacrifices, including offerings of food, animals, and even, in some cases, human lives. The most chilling of these practices was the rite of child sacrifice, where firstborn children were offered to Baal in a desperate bid to gain his favor. These harrowing practices reflect the high stakes of ancient worship, where the fear of displeasing a powerful deity could lead to devastating consequences. In ancient texts, Baal is depicted with a mixture of respect and fear. He is often described as a formidable figure, wielding thunderbolts and commanding the forces of nature. His image is a reminder of the raw power he held over the world, capable of both nurturing and destroying. The texts depict him as a central figure in a pantheon of gods, a being who held dominion over the elements and whose favor was crucial for survival. These accounts capture the duality of Baal's nature, representing both the life-giving and destructive aspects of his power. 
The portrayal of Baal in these ancient writings serves as a powerful testament to the deep-seated fears and reverence that characterized his worship. He is shown as a deity who could bring life and prosperity, but also as a figure whose displeasure could lead to catastrophe. This duality is central to the understanding of Baal's role in ancient Canaanite culture, reflecting the complex relationship between humanity and the divine forces that shaped their world. Baal's legacy is a haunting reminder of the ancient world's reverence and fear of the forces that governed their lives. His story, marked by intense rituals and powerful depictions, stands as a chilling testament to the lengths people would go to in their quest to understand and appease the gods. Through these ancient texts and practices, the figure of Baal continues to evoke a profound sense of both awe and terror, capturing the deep and often unsettling nature of ancient beliefs. In the heart of Arab folklore and myth, the jinn emerge as some of the most intriguing and eerie beings. These shape-shifting demons are not just the stuff of ancient tales, but represent a rich tapestry of fear, magic, and mystery. Their presence in the stories of the past sends shivers down the spine, embodying the unknown and the uncontrollable forces that once loomed large in the minds of people. The origins of jinn are deeply rooted in pre-Islamic Arab culture. They were believed to be spirits made of smokeless fire, existing in a parallel world to humans. According to the legends, jinn could take on various forms, animals, humans, or even abstract shapes. This ability to shift shapes made them particularly unsettling, as their true nature could never be fully known or understood. They inhabited desolate places like deserts and ruins, where the unseen and the supernatural seemed most likely to lurk. Their origins are not just a point of fascination, but a source of deep-seated fear, reflecting humanity's ancient anxieties about the invisible and the unpredictable. The powers and abilities of jinn are as diverse as their forms. They are known for their extraordinary strength, their capacity to influence the natural world, and their ability to possess and control individuals. Some jinn are believed to have the power to grant wishes, though this power often comes with a dark twist. The notion of a wish granted by a jinn can be both enticing and terrifying, as it often leads to unintended and disastrous consequences. This duality, the promise of power mixed with the threat of malevolence, makes jinn figures both alluring and frightening. In the rich tapestry of folk tales and religious texts, jinn play a variety of roles. They are featured prominently in the 1001 Nights, Arabian Nights, where they often appear as antagonists or tricksters. These stories reveal the jinn as beings who can be both malevolent and benevolent, reflecting the complexities of their nature. In some tales, they are bound to serve those who can control them, revealing a dynamic of power and submission that adds layers to their character. In Islamic tradition, jinn are mentioned in the Quran and Hadith, where they are depicted as beings created by Allah from smokeless fire, distinct from humans and angels. They possess free will and are accountable for their actions, capable of both good and evil. This religious portrayal aligns with the broader folklore but adds a dimension of moral and spiritual significance. In Islam, jinn are believed to have the ability to influence human behavior, making them a significant part of the spiritual landscape and adding a layer of fear and respect to their presence. The tales of jinn, with their shape-shifting abilities and enigmatic nature, evoke a deep sense of awe and fear. They represent the darker aspects of the supernatural, embodying the unknown and the potentially malevolent forces that exist just beyond human perception. Their stories remind us of the thin line between the familiar and the uncanny, capturing the timeless human fascination with the forces that shape our world and the terror that accompanies their presence. In the vast and ancient tapestry of Hindu mythology, the Rakshasas stand out as figures of profound dread and darkness. These demons, steeped in ancient lore and myth, are the embodiment of fearsome and malevolent forces that have haunted the imaginations of generations. Rakshasas are rooted in the historical and mythological traditions of India, their origins deeply intertwined with ancient Hindu texts and legends. In these tales, they are often depicted as formidable beings who possess a blend of supernatural strength and cunning intelligence. Unlike the more benevolent deities and heroes of Hindu mythology, Rakshasas represent the chaotic and destructive forces that challenge the order of the cosmos. Their presence in the myths serves as a stark reminder of the ever-present struggle between good and evil. 
The characteristics and abilities of Rakshasas are as diverse as they are terrifying. They are often portrayed as having the ability to shapeshift, transforming themselves into various forms to deceive and attack their enemies. This power of transformation makes them particularly unsettling, as they can appear as anything from beautiful beings to monstrous creatures, blurring the lines between friend and foe. In addition to their shape-shifting abilities, Rakshasas are known for their strength and magical prowess, which they use to wreak havoc and sow discord. One of the most chilling aspects of Rakshasas is their ability to manipulate and control others. They are known to use dark magic and illusions to deceive and trap their victims, often leading them into dire situations. This sinister capability makes Rakshasas not only powerful adversaries, but also masters of psychological torment, preying on the fears and weaknesses of those who encounter them. Rakshasas are central figures in several major stories and epics of Hindu mythology. In the epic Ramayana, they play a prominent role as antagonists, with the demon king Ravana being one of the most famous Rakshasas. Ravana's kidnapping of Sita, the wife of the hero Rama, sets off a chain of events that leads to a climactic battle between good and evil. Ravana's character, with his immense power and dark deeds, embodies the essence of the Rakshasas' threat. His defeat is not just a victory for Rama, but a symbolic triumph over the chaotic forces embodied by the Rakshasas. In the Mahabharata, another major epic, Rakshasas are depicted as both enemies and allies in the complex tapestry of the story. Their interactions with the heroes and gods reveal the depth of their malevolence and the extent of their influence. The Rakshasas in these tales are not merely evil beings, but also reflections of the deeper struggles and conflicts within the human psyche and the natural world. The stories of Rakshasas are filled with vivid and haunting imagery, capturing the imagination with their dark and menacing presence. They serve as a powerful symbol of the chaotic forces that threaten the balance of the world, embodying the fears and challenges that must be faced and overcome. Through their depiction in myth and epic, Rakshasas continue to evoke a sense of awe and terror, reminding us of the enduring struggle between light and darkness. In the rich landscape of Japanese folklore, the Oni emerge as some of the most frightening and compelling demons. Their very name conjures images of terror and supernatural power, capturing the imagination with their menacing presence and the chilling tales that surround them. The origins of Oni stretch back to ancient Japan, deeply rooted in Shinto and Buddhist traditions. These demons are believed to be malevolent spirits, often associated with the forces of chaos and destruction. Their historical context reveals a world where these entities were seen as both punishers of the wicked and embodiments of nature's darker aspects. Oni were thought to reside in remote mountains or dark forests, places where the ordinary laws of the world seemed to bend and twist. They represented the unknown and the terrifying forces that lurk just beyond the safe boundaries of human settlements. Oni come in many forms, each more frightening than the last. The most common depiction is that of a large, fearsome creature with horns, sharp claws, and wild hair. Their skin can be a range of colors, from bright red to deep blue, symbolizing their otherworldly and disturbing nature. Some Oni are shown with one eye, while others have multiple eyes, adding to their eerie and unsettling appearance. These different types of Oni can vary greatly in their characteristics, but they all share a common theme of fear and malevolence. Among the many types of Oni, there are distinctions based on their specific traits and roles. Some are known as powerful ogre-like beings who terrorize and eat human flesh, while others are tricksters who play cruel jokes on unsuspecting people. The variation in their forms and behaviors reflects the diverse nature of their menace, from physical destruction to psychological torment. This range of types makes Oni particularly versatile and enduring figures in Japanese folklore, as they can embody various aspects of fear and danger. Culturally, Oni hold a significant place in Japanese traditions and folk tales. They are featured prominently in festivals such as Setsubun, where people throw beans to drive away the Oni and bring good luck for the coming year. This ritual reflects the belief in Oni as both a source of terror and a symbol of the challenges that need to be overcome. The stories and festivals surrounding Oni capture the essence of their role in Japanese culture as both harbingers of doom and symbols of the human struggle against the forces of evil. 
Folk tales about Oni are filled with chilling and memorable encounters. One famous tale involves a brave warrior who faces an Oni in a terrifying battle, showcasing the hero's courage and strength against overwhelming odds. These stories often explore themes of bravery, virtue, and the triumph of good over evil. The vivid descriptions of Oni and their actions in these tales evoke a sense of dread and awe, illustrating the deep impact these demons have had on the cultural imagination. Oni also appear in various forms of Japanese art and literature, where they are portrayed as both fearsome adversaries and complex symbols. The depictions serve as a powerful reminder of the darker aspects of human nature and the supernatural forces that can disrupt the harmony of the world. Through their stories and images, Oni continue to captivate and terrify, embodying the timeless human fascination with the unknown and the supernatural. In the chilling depths of Native American folklore, the Wendigo stands as one of the most terrifying and haunting figures. This creature, often associated with cannibalism and insatiable hunger, captures the imagination with its nightmarish presence and the profound fear it evokes. The origins of the Wendigo trace back to the traditional stories of the Algonquian-speaking peoples of North America. In these tales, the Wendigo is a spirit or monster that embodies extreme greed and malevolence. It is said to be born from the practice of cannibalism, a crime so severe that it could lead to the transformation into a Wendigo. The curse of the Wendigo is a chilling reminder of the consequences of such forbidden acts, reflecting deep-seated fears and the moral teachings of these communities. Wendigos are characterized by their horrifying appearance and behaviors. They are often described as gaunt and emaciated, with an almost skeletal frame and glowing eyes. Their skin is said to be stretched tight over their bones, giving them a ghastly and unsettling look. This emaciated form is not just for show, it symbolizes their endless hunger and the monstrous nature of their existence. The Wendigo's hunger is not just physical but spiritual, a relentless craving that can never be satisfied. This insatiable appetite for human flesh represents the ultimate violation of societal norms and the loss of humanity. The behavior of the Wendigo is as terrifying as its appearance. It is believed to be a predatory spirit, lurking in the wilderness and preying on those who venture too far from safety. The Wendigo is said to stalk its victims, driving them to madness with its presence before finally consuming them. The fear it inspires is not just about physical harm, but also about the complete and utter loss of control and sanity. In some stories, those who encounter a Wendigo are driven to cannibalism themselves, becoming Wendigos in turn. This transformation serves as a powerful metaphor for the corrupting and consuming nature of greed and evil. In Native American traditions, the Wendigo plays a significant role as both a cautionary tale and a symbol of the dangers of breaking societal rules. The legend serves as a warning against extreme greed and the consequences of losing one's humanity. It is also a reflection of the harsh and unforgiving nature of the wilderness, where survival often depends on adhering to moral and social codes. The stories of the Wendigo are meant to instill fear and respect for these codes, ensuring that the community remains united and morally grounded. The Wendigo's role extends beyond mere folklore into the realm of spiritual and psychological terror. Its presence in stories and rituals highlights the deep-seated fears of the unknown and the monstrous potential within every individual. The Wendigo represents the ultimate loss of self-control and the terrifying possibility of becoming something wholly alien and monstrous. Through its terrifying stories and the fear it inspires, the Wendigo continues to haunt the collective imagination, serving as a powerful reminder of the consequences of moral and spiritual transgression. Its legacy is one of fear, caution, and the profound realization of the darkness that can consume us if we stray from the path of humanity and decency. In the dense and shadowy forests of Mexico, there exists a hidden world where mischief reigns and the air is thick with ancient magic. This is the domain of the Shinex, enigmatic beings whose presence sends shivers down the spine of anyone who dares to venture into their territory. Known for their playful yet malevolent nature, the Shinex are deeply woven into the fabric of Mexican folklore, embodying both the charm and danger of the natural world. The origins of the Shinex are steeped in the rich cultural heritage of Mexico, particularly among the indigenous peoples such as the Totonac and Nahua. 
These small, mischievous demons are believed to inhabit the forests, mountains, and even the corners of rural villages. They are often described as tiny, elusive beings who live in the shadows, making their home in the hidden places of nature. The Shinex are deeply tied to the natural world, and their existence reflects the complex relationship between humans and the wilderness. In these stories, the Shinex are not merely creatures of legend, but are integral to the cultural and spiritual life of the people. What sets the Shinex apart is their unique blend of abilities and their impact on those who encounter them. Unlike the more overtly malevolent demons of other cultures, Shinex are known for their mischief and cunning. They have the power to lead travelers astray, causing them to lose their way in the dense forest or wander endlessly through the mountains. This ability to manipulate the environment is a source of fear and frustration, as those who fall victim to their tricks often find themselves lost and disoriented. The Shinex influence extends beyond mere mischief. They can cause illness or misfortune if they are angered or if their demands are not met. In Mexican folklore, the role of the Shinex goes beyond their mischievous antics. They are seen as guardians of nature, protecting the forests and mountains from those who would harm them. Their actions, though often frustrating and alarming, are believed to serve as a reminder of the respect and reverence that nature demands. The stories of the Shinex emphasize the importance of living in harmony with the natural world, highlighting the consequences of disregarding the balance of nature. This role is not just about fear, but also about teaching respect and understanding for the environment. Local traditions reflect the deep-seated belief in the Shinex and their role in the community. Rituals and offerings are sometimes made to appease these mischievous spirits and ensure safe passage through their domains. It is common for people to leave small gifts or tokens in the forest, hoping to gain favor and avoid the tricks of the Shinex. These traditions are a testament to the lasting influence of the Shinex on the cultural and spiritual practices of the people. They serve as a reminder of the delicate balance between human activity and the natural world, urging respect and caution in all interactions with nature. The Shinex, with their blend of playful mischief and powerful influence, embody the complex and often unsettling relationship between humans and the wild. Their stories and presence evoke a deep sense of awe and fear, reflecting the timeless human fascination with the unseen forces that shape our world. Through their legends and the cautionary tales that surround them, the Shinex remind us of the power and mystery of the natural world and the importance of respecting the boundaries that separate us from the forces that dwell within it. In the icy expanses of Norse mythology, few creatures inspire as much dread as the Draugr. These undead monsters, trapped between the world of the living and the dead, haunt the desolate landscapes of ancient Scandinavian folklore with an eerie persistence. Their chilling presence lingers in the shadows, evoking a profound sense of unease that stretches back to the heart of Viking tradition. The Draugr have their origins in Norse legend, where they are depicted as reanimated corpses, often risen from their graves with a malevolent intent. These beings are far from the passive ghosts of other cultures. They are full of rage and strength, making them fearsome entities that terrorize both the living and the dead. The Draugr are described as having a ghastly appearance, with decaying flesh and a putrid smell that precedes them. Their very presence evokes horror, as they defy the natural order by walking among the living despite their death. One of the most disturbing aspects of the Draugr is their ability to leave their graves and wreak havoc. These creatures are not bound by the usual constraints of the undead. They possess immense physical strength and can often be found guarding their tombs or haunting their former homes. Their powers include the ability to change their size, becoming as large as a mountain or as small as a cat, and they can spread disease and death wherever they go. This malevolent force is driven by an insatiable hunger for both human flesh and vengeance, making them relentless predators of the living. In Norse myth and legend, the Draugr play a significant role as symbols of death and the afterlife. They are often featured in tales that highlight the fears of ancient Norse society regarding the dead. These monsters are not merely the restless spirits of the deceased, but represent the dangers and disruptions that arise when the natural order is disturbed. Their stories often revolve around their attempts to reclaim their former lives or seek vengeance against those who wronged them. 
This sense of unrest and unresolved conflict makes the drawbar a powerful symbol of the consequences of improper burial practices and the importance of honoring the dead. The historical significance of the drawbar in Viking culture cannot be understated. These creatures reflect the deep-seated fears and beliefs of a society that lived in close connection with the harsh and unforgiving landscape of Scandinavia. The tales of the Draugr served as cautionary stories, warning people of the consequences of violating the customs of death and burial. They also underscore the Norse belief in an afterlife that was fraught with danger and the importance of proper rituals to ensure peace in the afterlife. The Draugr's presence in Norse legends provides a chilling glimpse into the fears and anxieties of a bygone era. Their stories capture the essence of a world where the boundaries between the living and the dead are blurred, and where the restless spirits of the deceased can return with a vengeance. The image of the Draugr, with their decayed bodies and insatiable hunger, continues to evoke a deep sense of unease, reminding us of the eternal fears that lie just beyond the edge of the known world. On quiet, moonlit nights, when the wind whispers through the trees, you might hear the sorrowful cries of La Llorona, a ghostly figure whose wails pierce the darkness with a haunting sorrow. Her legend, known throughout Latin America, tells the story of a mother whose grief and regret have transformed her into an eternal specter, endlessly searching for her lost children. The origins of La Llorona's tale vary across regions, but her story often begins with a tragic loss that leads to her becoming a ghostly figure. The most common version tells of a woman who, in a fit of madness or despair, drowned her children in a river or lake. Overwhelmed by her actions and unable to bear the weight of her grief, she is said to have taken her own life. In the afterlife, her spirit became trapped between the worlds, condemned to weep for her lost children and roam the earth in search of them. Her appearance is as sorrowful as her story. La Llorona is typically described as a ghostly woman in a tattered white dress, her long hair disheveled and her eyes filled with endless tears. Her mournful cries, I, Ms. Hios, or Oh, my children, echo through the night, sending shivers down the spine of anyone who hears them. The sound of her crying is said to be a forewarning of danger, especially to children who might wander too close to bodies of water. The mere mention of La Llorona can send chills through anyone, as her presence symbolizes a profound and unending sorrow. In the world of mythology, La Llorona serves as a powerful symbol of maternal grief and remorse. Her legend explores themes of loss, punishment, and the eternal consequences of one's actions. She is both a cautionary figure and a reflection of the deep emotional pain that can follow tragedy. The mythology surrounding La Llorona underscores the cultural belief that actions in life have far-reaching consequences and that the soul's torment can continue beyond death. The cultural impact of La Llorona is profound and widespread. She is a figure that transcends national boundaries within Latin America, appearing in numerous stories, songs, and popular media. Her legend serves as a cautionary tale to children, warning them of the dangers of straying too far from home or disobeying their parents. The story of La Llorona has become a part of community folklore, illustrating the collective fears and values of the people who tell her tale. In literature and film, La Llorona has been depicted in various ways, each representation adding a layer to her complex legacy. From ghost stories told around campfires to movies and television shows, her character evolves but always maintains the core elements of sorrow and grief. These portrayals serve to keep her legend alive, continuously engaging new audiences and reinforcing the timeless themes of her story. La Llorona's story, with its chilling cries and sorrowful tale, captures the imagination and evokes a deep emotional response. Her legend serves as a powerful reminder of the consequences of tragic actions and the profound nature of maternal love and loss. Through her weeping, she tells a story of eternal grief and serves as a haunting reflection of the human condition. In the shadowy depths of Greek mythology, where the world meets the underworld, reigns Hades, the enigmatic god of the dead. As the ruler of the afterlife, Hades holds dominion over the souls of the departed and governs the realm that lies beyond mortal existence. His role is both formidable and misunderstood, casting a long shadow over the ancient Greek pantheon. Hades is often depicted as a stern and unyielding figure, commanding respect and fear in equal measure. 
His realm, known as the Underworld, is a place where souls are judged and sent to their final resting places. Unlike the more malevolent demons of other cultures, Hades himself is not inherently evil. His role is to maintain order and balance in the afterlife, ensuring that souls are appropriately sorted and that the cycle of life and death remains uninterrupted. The solemnity of his role is reflected in his appearance, often shown with a dark, brooding countenance and accompanied by his three-headed guard dog, Cerberus, who watches over the gates of the underworld. In contrast to the modern depictions of demons, which often emphasize malevolence and chaos, Hades' character embodies a more complex and less antagonistic nature. While he presides over a grim and unyielding realm, he is not a figure of pure evil. Instead, he represents the natural order of life and death, a necessary counterpart to the vibrant and ever-changing world of the living. This distinction sets him apart from the modern interpretations of demons, which often focus on their role as sources of corruption and destruction. Hades' influence extends far beyond ancient Greece, echoing through the annals of Western culture. In literature, art, and modern media, he has been portrayed in various ways, ranging from a distant, cold ruler to a more sympathetic and nuanced character. These representations reflect the shifting perceptions of death and the afterlife, illustrating how ancient beliefs have been reinterpreted through the ages. Hades' character has inspired countless works, from classical literature to contemporary films, each adding a layer to his rich and enduring legacy. The impact of Hades on Western culture is profound. He serves as a reminder of the inevitability of death and the need for balance between life and the afterlife. His presence in stories and art highlights the timeless human fascination with the afterlife and the mysteries that lie beyond the mortal coil. As the god of the underworld, Hades remains a powerful symbol of the eternal struggle between life and death, order and chaos, and the profound and often unsettling truths that lie at the heart of human existence. In the dim recesses of Greek mythology, there lurks a group of terrifying sisters known as the Gorgons. Their very name sends shivers down the spine, conjuring images of hideous, snake-haired figures whose gaze can turn the unwary to stone. Their story is one of fear, transformation, and a tragic beauty that has haunted the shadows of ancient tales. The Gorgons are ancient creatures, born from the primordial forces of the universe. They are often described with horrifying features, their hair is a writhing mass of snakes, their skin is scaly, and their eyes are capable of turning any living being into a lifeless statue with a single glance. These grotesque attributes are not mere embellishments, but are symbolic of the deep fears that ancient people had about the unknown and the monstrous. Among the Gorgons, Medusa is perhaps the most infamous. Unlike her sisters, Steno and Euryale, Medusa was once a beautiful maiden. Her transformation into a Gorgon was a punishment for her pride and, according to some myths, her desecration of Athena's temple. Medusa's story is steeped in tragedy and horror, her once beautiful locks became serpents, her eyes became deadly weapons, and her beauty was replaced with an aura of terror. The curse she bore made her a monster, a symbol of profound and unrelenting punishment. Medusa's sisters, Steno and Euryale, share the same monstrous traits but differ in their stories. Steno is known for her incredible strength and ferocity, while Euryale's role is often less defined, though she too possesses the same petrifying power. Together, these sisters embody a terrifying triad that evokes a primal fear of the monstrous and the grotesque. The Gorgon's influence extends beyond the confines of myth into the world of art and culture. Ancient Greek vases, sculptures, and coins often depicted their fearsome visages, emphasizing their role as powerful symbols of protection and danger. The image of Medusa's head was used as a protective emblem known as the Gorgonian, believed to ward off evil spirits and enemies. In literature and modern culture, the Gorgons have been represented in various ways, reflecting both their fearsome nature and the tragic elements of their stories. From classic literature to contemporary film, their image has evolved, but the core elements of horror and tragedy remain. They continue to be portrayed as figures of immense power and suffering, their stories a reminder of the delicate balance between beauty and monstrosity. The Gorgon's tale resonates deeply, evoking a mixture of fear and empathy. 
Their monstrous forms and tragic backstories remind us of the ancient Greeks' profound understanding of the darker aspects of human nature and existence. The Gorgons remain a chilling testament to the power of myth to capture the most primal fears and to reflect the complex interplay between punishment, transformation, and the enduring quest for redemption. When the shadows lengthen and the light begins to fade, a figure emerges from the darkness, the Grim Reaper, the haunting personification of death. Draped in a cloak as dark as midnight, with a skeletal face hidden beneath a hood, this figure embodies the end of life and the unknown that lies beyond. The Grim Reaper's origins span across many cultures, each offering a unique glimpse into humanity's relationship with death. In medieval Europe, he is often depicted as a skeletal figure wielding a scythe, a symbol of his role in harvesting souls as one might harvest crops. This image has become iconic, representing the inescapable nature of death that awaits everyone, regardless of status or wealth. In other cultures, similar figures appear with their own distinct characteristics. In ancient Greek mythology, Thanatos, the personification of death, is often portrayed as a gentle and serene figure, guiding souls to the underworld. Meanwhile, in the Norse tradition, the Valkyries, led by Odin, select those who die bravely in battle and escort them to Valhalla. Though their roles differ, they all share a common thread, the duty of guiding souls from the world of the living to the afterlife. The Grim Reaper's characteristics are both eerie and compelling. His skeletal appearance reflects the inevitable decay of the physical body, while his cloak signifies the shrouded mystery of what lies beyond death. The scythe, with its sharp edge, serves as a tool for cutting down the lives that have reached their end, a reminder of the fleeting nature of existence. Despite his chilling appearance, the Grim Reaper is not always depicted as malevolent. Often, he is a neutral force, performing his role with an impartiality that underscores the natural order of life and death. In literature and art, the Grim Reaper is a powerful symbol that has inspired countless works. From classic literature to modern horror, his image evokes a range of emotions, from fear to resignation. In Shakespeare's plays, for example, the figure of death often appears as a looming, inevitable force, highlighting the transient nature of life. In contemporary culture, the Grim Reaper appears in various forms, from darkly humorous portrayals in cartoons and films to more serious representations in dramatic literature. The role of the Grim Reaper in mythology and literature serves as a poignant reminder of death's inescapable reality. He embodies the universal experience of mortality and the questions that surround the end of life. His presence in stories and art reflects our collective anxieties and curiosities about what lies beyond, as well as the acceptance of death as a natural part of the human experience. As the figure who stands at the threshold between life and death, the Grim Reaper continues to capture the imagination and fears of people across cultures. His haunting image serves as a powerful reminder of our mortality and the mysteries that lie in wait, evoking both fear and contemplation as we confront the inevitable end of our journey. In the stillness of the night, when the moon casts its eerie glow over the landscape, a mournful wail pierces the silence, a sound that sends shivers down the spine and chills the very soul. This is the cry of the Banshee, a spectral figure from Irish folklore known as the Harbinger of Death. Her chilling lament is not just a sound, but a premonition, a warning that death is near. The origins of the Banshee are deeply rooted in ancient Irish traditions. Traditionally, she is depicted as a female spirit whose mournful cry foretells the imminent death of a family member. The name Banshee comes from the Irish Bean Sea or Woman of the Fairy Mound, highlighting her connection to the otherworldly realms. Her origins vary slightly between stories, sometimes she is seen as a grieving woman who has died tragically, while in other tales, she is an ancient fairy, her presence a sign of supernatural influence. The characteristics of the Banshee are both haunting and sorrowful. She is often described as having a ghostly appearance, with long, flowing hair and a face etched with sorrow. Her wail is said to be so heart-wrenching that it can chill even the bravest of souls. This cry is not just a noise, but a mournful expression of her duty to announce death, marking the end of life with a touch of otherworldly despair. The Banshee's appearance can vary from a beautiful, ethereal woman to a more frightening, ghastly figure, depending on the tale. 
In Irish folklore, the role of the Banshee is deeply intertwined with the concepts of death and family. She is often associated with specific families or clans, and her wail is a personal warning of loss. The Banshee's presence is not random, but connected to the lineage of those who hear her cry. This connection adds a layer of intimacy to her role, making her a deeply personal omen of impending death rather than a general harbinger of doom. The Banshee's depiction in literature and media has evolved over time, reflecting both the enduring power of her myth and the ways in which modern culture reinterprets ancient stories. In classic literature, she appears as a symbol of death's inevitability and the emotional weight of loss. Her cry is a poignant reminder of the fragility of life and the sorrow that accompanies it. In contemporary media, the Banshee has been portrayed in various forms, from horror films and television shows to fantasy novels. These modern interpretations often blend traditional elements with new twists, portraying her as both a menacing specter and a tragic figure. The haunting beauty of the Banshee remains a powerful symbol of death and mourning, reflecting our enduring fascination with the supernatural and the ways in which we grapple with the concepts of life and death. The Banshee's story is a powerful reminder of the thin veil that separates the living from the dead. Her mournful wail serves as a somber announcement of the end of life, a chilling echo of the inevitability of mortality. As a figure who bridges the worlds of the living and the supernatural, the Banshee embodies the deep-seated fears and emotions surrounding death, offering a haunting yet poignant reflection on the nature of existence and the sorrow that accompanies loss. In the silence of a moonlit night, when shadows stretch and the wind whispers through the trees, a dark presence may slip through the darkness, the vampire. These creatures, both alluring and terrifying, have haunted the nightmares of countless generations. Their story is one of death and life, darkness and desire. The vampire's origins are shrouded in mystery, with stories emerging from diverse cultures across the globe. In Eastern Europe, particularly in Romania and Bulgaria, the vampire is known as a revenant, a restless spirit that rises from the grave to feed on the blood of the living. These early vampires were often believed to be the bodies of the recently deceased who had not been properly laid to rest, their souls trapped in an endless hunger for life. Meanwhile, in ancient Greece and Rome, myths spoke of Lamiae and Striges, female demons who preyed upon children and drained their blood, laying the groundwork for the modern vampire lore. Vampires come in various shapes and forms, each culture adding its own unique touch to these undead predators. Some tales describe them as handsome and sophisticated, capable of charming their victims with a mere glance. Others paint a more gruesome picture, pallid, with fangs and bloodshot eyes, driven solely by an insatiable thirst. Despite these variations, common characteristics link all vampires. They are immortal, surviving by consuming the blood of the living. Their presence is often accompanied by a certain coldness, and they are typically vulnerable to sunlight, which burns their flesh and renders them powerless. Their abilities extend beyond their supernatural strength and speed. Vampires are often depicted as having the power to control animals, such as bats and wolves, and to mesmerize or hypnotize their prey. They are usually portrayed as being able to transform into mist or animals, a chilling reminder of their otherworldly nature. The bite of a vampire is a mix of seduction and terror, offering both a promise of eternal life and a curse of eternal thirst. Cultural significance surrounds the vampire myth with a blend of fear and fascination. Historically, the vampire was a symbol of the unknown, representing fears of disease and death that could not be easily explained. The idea of an immortal creature that preys on the living taps into deep-seated anxieties about mortality and the afterlife. In literature and film, vampires are often depicted as tragic figures, cursed with immortality and condemned to a life of solitude. This portrayal adds layers of emotional complexity to their character, turning them into symbols of lost humanity and the eternal struggle between life and death. The vampire has also become a staple of modern pop culture, where their image has evolved to reflect contemporary fears and desires. In films, books, and television, vampires are often shown as complex characters caught between their monstrous instincts and their desire for redemption or love. 
This transformation highlights society's ongoing fascination with the vampire as both a creature of horror and a figure of longing, exploring themes of immortality, forbidden love, and the human condition. As night falls and the shadows lengthen, the vampire stands as a haunting reminder of the thin line between life and death. Their story, marked by an insatiable hunger and a tragic quest for eternity, resonates deeply with the human experience. The vampire's legacy is one of both terror and allure, reflecting our deepest fears and our most profound desires. In the dim light of the desert dusk, when shadows lengthen and the silence of the land becomes thick with anticipation, the legend of the skinwalker stirs. This figure, shrouded in fear and mystery, haunts the corners of Navajo lore with a presence that chills the very marrow of those who hear its name. The Skinwalker is rooted deeply in Navajo culture, embodying the fears and taboos of a people who hold a profound respect for the natural world. Traditionally, Skinwalkers are believed to be witches who have gained the power to transform into, or take on the guise of, various animals. This ability to shapeshift is not simply a matter of changing appearance, it is said to involve a deep and dark magic, a perversion of the natural order. The origins of these malevolent beings are wrapped in secrecy and fear, often tied to stories of individuals who have betrayed their own communities or used their powers for malevolent purposes. The abilities and practices of the Skinwalker are deeply unsettling. In Navajo belief, these shapeshifters possess the power to become any animal they choose, wolves, coyotes, owls, and even insects. This transformation is not just a superficial change, but a complete metamorphosis that allows the skinwalker to access the attributes of the animal, including its physical strength and stealth. This power is used to inflict harm or spread fear, often in the form of curses or by stalking and terrorizing their victims. The skinwalker is also said to possess the ability to mimic voices and sounds, creating an eerie sense of dread as they deceive and manipulate. These dark practitioners are said to perform their rituals in secrecy, conducting their rites under the cover of darkness and in places that are considered sacred or taboo. The rituals involve chanting and the use of ceremonial objects, often with the goal of invoking supernatural powers or cursing others. This aspect of skinwalker lore reflects a deep-seated fear of the misuse of power and the corruption of spiritual practices. The impact of skinwalker legends on Navajo culture is profound. They serve as a cautionary tale, a reminder of the consequences of straying from cultural norms and ethical boundaries. The fear of encountering a skinwalker influences behavior and traditions, reinforcing the importance of maintaining respect for the natural and spiritual worlds. The legend also functions as a way to explain and cope with unexplained phenomena, such as sudden illness or misfortune, which are attributed to the malevolent actions of these shapeshifters. The skinwalker myth also reflects broader themes of duality and transformation in Navajo culture. They embody the fear of the unknown and the potential for corruption within the human soul. The story of the skinwalker is not just a tale of terror, but a reflection of deeper anxieties about the balance between good and evil, and the ways in which that balance can be disturbed. In the quiet of the desert night, as the stars flicker and the wind whispers through the sagebrush, the legend of the skinwalker endures. It is a story that continues to evoke fear and awe, a chilling reminder of the dark possibilities that lie beneath the surface of our understanding. The skinwalker stands as a powerful symbol of the dangers of misusing power and the profound respect required to live harmoniously with the world around us. In the quiet of the night, under a sky veiled in darkness, a shadow lurks in the periphery of fear and disbelief. The chilling tale of the chupacabra, the blood-sucking beast, has haunted Latin American folklore with a terror that transcends the realm of mere superstition. The chupacabra's origins trace back to the mid-1990s in Puerto Rico, where reports of livestock slaughter, particularly goats, began to surface with a disturbing pattern. Animals were found drained of blood, their corpses bearing the unmistakable signs of a predator whose hunger seemed to go beyond the natural. Witnesses described a creature with a menacing appearance, spiked along its spine, with a strange, reptilian or sometimes alien-like visage. These early sightings set the stage for a creature that would soon become a monstrous icon across Latin America. As the legend spread, the chupacabra took on various forms in the stories of those who encountered it. 
Descriptions varied, with some describing it as a small, scaly creature with sharp claws and fangs, while others spoke of a more sinister, winged being. The creature's purported ability to drain blood from its victims created an aura of dread and mystery that captivated imaginations. Eyewitnesses reported that the chupacabra would leave behind not just lifeless animals, but a palpable sense of fear, as if the beast were not only attacking the body, but also the spirit. The impact of the chupacabra on communities has been profound. For many, the beast represents a tangible threat in a world already fraught with the unknown. The chilling reports of its attacks fueled fears and anxieties, making the creature a symbol of the deeper insecurities that people face. Stories of the chupacabra have influenced local culture, with the beast becoming a figure of legend and a topic of conversation in both folklore and media. In Latin America, the chupacabra holds a unique cultural significance. It has become a part of the collective imagination, embodying the primal fear of the unseen and the unknown. The creature is often used to explain misfortune or loss, serving as a scapegoat for inexplicable events. Its presence in folklore speaks to a broader human experience, the need to find meaning in chaos and the comfort of naming our fears. In the eerie silence of the night, the chupacabra remains an unsettling reminder of the fears that lurk in the shadows of our understanding. It embodies the terror of the unknown and the primal fear of being hunted by something beyond our control. Through its legend, the chupacabra continues to evoke a deep, unsettling sense of dread, making it a haunting figure in the dark corners of Latin American culture. In the cold, vast expanse of the Himalayas, where the world is draped in snow and silence, an elusive figure roams. The Yeti, known as the Abominable Snowman, stirs a mix of awe and terror with its chilling presence. Its story is one that weaves through history and myth, leaving a trail of mystery that has captivated imaginations for centuries. The origins of the Yeti can be traced back to ancient legends of the Tibetan and Nepali people. In these high-altitude regions, where harsh conditions and uncharted territories create an aura of mystery, the Yeti is said to be a large, ape-like creature that lives in the snow-covered mountains. Descriptions of the Yeti vary, but it is often depicted as a towering figure covered in white fur, blending seamlessly with the snowy landscape. It is a creature that exists on the edge of the known world, a being as enigmatic as the icy peaks it inhabits. Local folklore describes the Yeti as both a guardian of the mountains and a fearsome predator. Stories tell of encounters with this elusive being, of footprints found in the snow that defy explanation. Villagers recount chilling tales of the Yeti's mournful howls echoing through the cold, dark nights. In these stories, the Yeti represents both a physical and spiritual presence, a reminder of the power and mystery of nature. The Yeti's cultural and mythological significance is profound. In Tibetan Buddhism, the creature is sometimes seen as a protector of the sacred mountain ranges. The snowy peaks are considered holy, and the Yeti, in this context, is a guardian that ensures the sanctity of these revered places. This connection to spirituality adds layers to its legend, making it more than just a creature of fear, but also one of reverence and awe. Over time, the Yeti has become an iconic figure in popular culture. Its image has appeared in films, books, and media, often depicted as a monstrous creature or a gentle giant. The Yeti story has been woven into the fabric of adventure and mystery, from the early 20th century expeditions that sought to find evidence of its existence to contemporary portrayals in movies and cartoons. This portrayal has kept the legend alive, fueling curiosity and wonder about the unknown. Despite advances in science and exploration, the Yeti remains an elusive figure, straddling the line between myth and reality. Its story continues to evoke a sense of the sublime, a reminder of the wild and untamed nature that lies beyond the reach of human understanding. The Yeti stands as a symbol of the mysteries that still exist in the farthest corners of our world, a creature that embodies both the fear and fascination of the unknown. In the shadowed corners of the apocalyptic visions found in the Bible, there lurks a figure of profound dread and devastation, Apollyon. This name, whispered through the ages, strikes fear into the hearts of many, representing the embodiment of destruction itself. From ancient texts to modern interpretations, Apollyon's story is one of terror and transformation, a reminder of the catastrophic forces that lurk at the end of days. 
Apollyon's origins are rooted in the book of Revelation, the final book of the New Testament. Here, Apollyon is introduced as the Angel of the Abyss, a name that translates to the Destroyer in Greek. This powerful entity emerges from the depths of a bottomless pit during the apocalyptic trials that plague humanity. In the imagery of Revelation, Apollyon is not merely a demon but a force of cosmic destruction, unleashed upon the earth as part of the divine judgment that will herald the end of the world. The role of Apollyon in Christian eschatology is both terrifying and pivotal. In the visions of John of Patmos, who recorded these revelations, Apollyon is described as leading an army of locust-like creatures with the power to torment and afflict those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. This depiction paints Apollyon as a harbinger of suffering and chaos, a figure whose very presence signals the unraveling of the world as we know it. The terror associated with Apollyon is not just physical but spiritual, symbolizing the ultimate punishment and the overwhelming power of divine retribution. In art and literature, Apollyon has been represented in various forms, each capturing the essence of dread that surrounds this apocalyptic figure. In medieval illustrations, Apollyon is often depicted with the grotesque features of a monstrous beast, combining elements of demons, dragons, and other nightmarish creatures. These artistic representations emphasize his role as a destroyer, often showing him in scenes of devastation and chaos. Literary works also explore Apollyon's character, portraying him as a figure of immense power and darkness. These portrayals tap into the primal fear of the end times, reflecting the anxieties and uncertainties of humanity faced with the unknown. Apollyon is a symbol of the ultimate confrontation between good and evil, a personification of the catastrophic forces that threaten to consume the world. Through these depictions, Apollyon becomes more than just a figure of ancient prophecy, he evolves into a cultural icon of fear and foreboding. The story of Apollyon is a poignant reminder of the fragility of human existence and the ever-present possibility of disaster. His legacy endures as a powerful symbol of the darker aspects of divine judgment, a figure whose presence evokes both terror and awe as the world approaches the final reckoning. In the flickering lights of modern cinema and the pages of contemporary literature, the once terrifying figures of ancient mythology are being reborn. These ancient demons, long feared and revered, now strut through our screens and books in new, captivating ways. Their eerie presence no longer just haunts old stories, but has found a fresh life in today's popular culture. From the silent shadows of classic horror films to the gripping narratives of modern novels, these demonic creatures have evolved in ways that both captivate and unsettle. Where once they were symbols of ancient fears and superstitions, today they are crafted into sophisticated characters that reflect our current anxieties. These modern interpretations breathe new life into these creatures, often enhancing their horror with contemporary issues and fears, making them more relatable and frightening to today's audiences. The transformation of these creatures is not just about visual changes. It reflects a deeper shift in how we understand and interact with fear. Demons in modern media are often depicted with psychological complexity and emotional depth, turning them from mere symbols of terror into figures of tragic and sometimes sympathetic backstories. For instance, characters like modern vampires and demons are frequently portrayed with intricate histories and motives that make them more than just embodiments of evil. They become characters with personal conflicts and vulnerabilities. This shift allows audiences to explore darker aspects of human nature and the complexities of morality in a way that ancient myths never could. Popular culture has also embraced these creatures with a blend of reverence and innovation. From blockbuster films that reimagine classic demons as complex antiheroes to television series that explore the lore behind these entities, the modern depiction of demons offers a fresh perspective. Films like The Exorcist and series like Supernatural have popularized the idea of demons as both terrifying and fascinating. They use these creatures to examine themes of good versus evil, human frailty, and the supernatural. This modern approach helps to keep ancient myths alive, continually reinterpreting them for new generations while amplifying their impact on our collective imagination. When compared to historical depictions, the contrast is striking. Ancient demons were often one-dimensional symbols of fear and punishment, crafted to reflect the values and fears of their time. 
historical depictions focused on physical terror and moral lessons. Modern representations, however, add layers of psychological horror and moral ambiguity. They reflect our current fears, such as the loss of control, the unknown, and personal demons, literally and metaphorically. The demons of today are not just external threats, they often represent internal struggles and fears, blurring the lines between reality and myth. In today's world, these creatures have become icons of a new kind of horror. Their evolution mirrors are changing attitudes toward fear and the supernatural. As they continue to evolve, they challenge our understanding of evil and morality, pushing us to confront our deepest fears and insecurities. Through this lens, ancient demons are not just relics of the past, but vibrant elements of our present culture, reflecting and shaping our collective fears and fantasies.